Hi everyone and welcome. Today I've got a bit of a problem. I need to machine this piece of pine on my table, but it's too long. This is 1.4 meters long. I need to cut a piece that's 1.3 meters long and my table's only one meter in length. So I'm gonna show you the technique we use called tiling in VCarve Pro to machine longer parts than our table. Let's get this set up and have a look at it. So the first thing I need to do when doing something like this is set the stock onto the table. I've used my hold down clamps to hold it in place, but the critical thing here is I've allowed one edge here to sit perfectly flush with the edge of my router table. When I made this table, I ran a cutter down the edge here so that I would have a reference edge which was parallel to my y-axis. And by using this, it's going to make this whole job really easy. Now that the piece is in place, I can bring the cutter down here and set my x and y zero. I don't have a lot of room to play with this. In fact, I only have a total of 10 millimeters to throw away. So I have to be very careful with my placement. Otherwise I'll be having to make a new piece, which I don't really want to do. The router cut is now positioned at x and y zero. And the first cut is going to cut out the bottom half of this piece. It will also cut me a reference hole. And you'll see that I'm going to use that reference hole later to reposition this board and get everything accurate. While it's cutting, I'll demonstrate in VCarve Pro how I made the files. Here is the piece I wish to machine. We start by putting a small reference hole and drilling it three millimeters in diameter, eight millimeters deep. The position of this hole is Y700 X40. We'll be using this hole to reposition our material when it comes time to cutting the second half of our piece. Next, we want to cut out the piece we wish to keep. For this, I'm going to use tiled toolpaths. I will enable tile toolpaths, and I'm going to set my tile height 700. This is half the height of my material, which is 1400. I'm also going to use pass through in Y direction, and I'm going to update. As you can see now, it has split my file into two separate tiles, tile T1 and T2. I can now create a toolpath. I'm also going to add some holding tabs. 3mm end mill, 8mm deep, and we'll calculate that. As you can see here now, Here's our first cut. It will drill our hole, 700 on the Y, 40 on the X, and then machine our part. Now the height of that hole is no coincidence. I set it to be exactly right on the intersection where I split the piece into two parts. What that means is when I move the piece down, we know exactly where that hole is. It will be at Y0, X40. And we can use that to reset our piece on the table to get it accurately aligned so we can cut the second part. Now you probably can't see this, but it's cut the first half of the, pro of the profile here. And right here, I got the machine to drill me a three millimeter hole. We're now going to use this hole to realign everything. The position of this hole is 40 millimeters in from the edge and 700 in from the bottom. When I move the whole board back here and back to zero, 
this pos position here will then represent 0, 40. So we'll quickly remove our clamps. And I'm going to quickly pull the material through to here. But also to make my life easy, I'm going to bring the router down. And I'm just going to move the router in Mac 3. to a position of x40, y0. I'm now going to carefully lower the cutter into that reference hole we made. Okay, so the board can now pivot on that point. But we now have our two points of reference that we can use. We have our straight edge and we have our hole. Now as long as I take this edge here, it can swing on that router bit and line the edge of my stock up with the edge of my table. I can clamp it down, just make sure it's flush, like so. And also clamp it down here. So I've now got my clamps put in, and hopefully I'll put them in areas where it's going to avoid being hit. The cut should come along here and then turn this way here. So if I'm correct on this, what should happen is it should actually start by re-drilling this hole here and then should start continuing cutting and ending at these points here. Well, with the cutting well underway, let's go back and have a look at preview of our tool paths. You'll notice here it shows the entire cutout piece, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click down here, draw tool paths in original position for visualization. I'm just going to uncheck that. Now, if I preview the tool path, I've got the profile selected, which I'll preview all tool paths. You can see here what it's going to draw me. I'll enlarge it a little bit, and you can see here is the first part we cut, and at the very top here, you can see half the hole. I'll just bring that down here now, and I'm going to now select tile T2, and I'm going to preview all tool parts. Now we can see this is the top part of the file we're going to be cutting. And down the very bottom is the other half of that hole that we were talking about. All that's left now is to save this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both tool paths and go save tool path. Let's push click save tool paths to file. And I'm going to call this project. We'll save that. We now look in the directory where we've saved it. 
you'll notice what it's actually done is saved as two separate files. It's labeled the files T1 or Tile 1 and T2, Tile 2. When it comes time to setting the, to cutting the project, we'll put our material on the table, load up T1 into Mac 3, machine it, then load T2 into the machine, reset the material on the table at the correct location, and machine the second part. All going well, it should come out a perfect cut. So I cut the holding tabs and here is what I'm left with, the completed piece, still longer than the table, but all cut in one piece. And I've got to say, you can barely see where it uh, joined on there. So this is actually the first time I've used tiling I've, and uh, I found it easy to do. And the real trick to it was having one reference edge you can use and drilling a hole to use as the second reference. After that, it's plain sailing. Well, I hope that's been useful to you guys. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.